as we meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Uh, well, here we are, locked down still, third week, uh, also third week of Epiphany season, and it's also the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, and we had a special service hosted this week at St. John the Baptist with uh, various churches around the area of Kensington and Notting Hill coming together to pray and to worship through this modern technology. It would be lovely to see you all here physically in the flesh as soon as we are able to do that safely. But in the meantime, here we are uh, worshipping through Zoom. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ who sacrificed himself for us to purify people as his own. Let us confess our sins. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You pardon, you bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and wonders the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 14. After his return from the defeat of Chador Laoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything for the truth that enlightens us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, 
and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's often been said that an abstract idea doesn't become real until you experience it yourself. This was certainly true for me with the week of prayer for Christian unity. My first parish was in Washington, D.C., and the churches of all denominations in my neighborhood, Georgetown, dutifully got together for Good Friday services each year, this same week, January 18th through 25th. They did a good job. There were also good observances also in San Francisco, my next parish, and then New York, my next. But it wasn't until I got to Rome that the week of prayer for Christian unity really changed in importance for me. It really came to matter. All of a sudden, I was in the minority. Among a sea of Roman Catholics, with a few small struggling Protestant congregations, I was not only a junior cleric, but a female one. For a while, Mary, my colleague, a former doctor from England, came through training as deacon and then priest with me at All Saints. But then, along with me, there were only two other women clergy ministering in all of Rome, an Italian Baptist and a Filipino Methodist, both in Italian-speaking congregations. I tried one time to look up the proportion of Protestant Anglicans to Roman Catholics in Rome and then gave up. Reliable statistics are hard to come by in Italy, and in the end, it didn't matter. We were a distinct minority in every way, and that was clear. In addition to my parish work, I was also a loyal supporter of the Anglican Center in Rome, where Mary and I were at first servers, then later allowed to preach and celebrate the Eucharist on Tuesdays. The Anglican Center was founded in 1966, when Archbishop Michael Ramsey came to Rome, and Pope Paul VI placed his own ring on the Archbishop's finger as a sign of their commitment to growing together in faith. I'd like to read you the beginning lines of the common declaration made on that occasion. In this city of Rome, from which St. Augustine was sent by St. Gregory to England and there founded the Cathedral See of Canterbury, towards which the eyes of all Anglicans now turn as the center of their Christian communion, His Holiness Pope Paul VI and His Grace Michael Ramsey, Archbishop of Canterbury, representing the Anglican Communion, have met to exchange fraternal greetings. At the conclusion of their meeting, they gave thanks to Almighty God, who by the action of the Holy Spirit has in these latter years created a new atmosphere of Christian fellowship between the Roman Catholic Church and the churches of the Anglican Communion. This encounter of 23rd March 1966 marks a new stage in the development of fraternal relations based upon Christian charity and of sincere efforts to remove the causes of conflict and to reestablish unity. In willing obedience to the command of Christ, who bade his disciples love one another, they declare that, with his help, they wish to leave in the hands of the God of mercy all that in the past has been opposed to this precept of charity, and that they make their own the mind of the apostle which he expressed in these words, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, from Philippians 3. They affirm their desire that all those Christians who belong to these two communions may be animated by these same sentiments of respect, esteem, and fraternal love. And in order to help these develop to the full, they intend to inaugurate between the Roman Catholic Church and the Anglican Communion a serious which, founded on the Gospels and on the ancient common traditions, may lead to that unity in truth for which Christ prayed. It was an historic occasion and recent, 1966, more than four centuries in coming. I spent eight and a half years in Rome. It was there that I changed denominations having been ordained a Presbyterian in 1984. It was there that I witnessed a variety of people working together to strengthen the witness of the Christian Church by strengthening the bonds of unity that in principle bound us one with another. Some worked harder than others. One of the senior clerics whom I came to know in Rome during the time that I lived there, 2009 to 2018, was Monsignor Mark Langham, who died 10 days ago from cancer. He was only 60. Although he didn't believe in the ordination of women, Mark became a friend of mine in the course of many services to celebrate Christian unity. Mark graduated from Cardinal Vaughan Memorial School before taking a degree in classics and history at Magdalen College, Cambridge. He was ordained as a Roman Catholic priest in 1990 serving as a parish priest in Bayswater. In 2001, he served as administrator at Westminster Cathedral, where he stayed until 2008. Then he left for Rome, appointed to the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, responsible for relations with Anglicans and Methodists, and also for the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. I renewed my friendship with Mark when I acted as temporary chaplain at Trinity College, Cambridge in 2018, as he had preceded me there to be the Roman Catholic chaplain to the university five years before. When I arrived, I invited him to tea. He brought me a bright yellow flower in a small pot to welcome me to Cambridge. Rome was a tough place to be a priest, from any branch of the church. The experience of church going is very different there. In my experience, many Roman Catholics there regard the profusion of exquisite and historic churches in their city as fixtures, places to drop into for a few minutes prayer after lunch on a weekday if you feel like it or have a current crisis in your life, but they are not thought of as a place for regular Sunday morning worship. They are part of the landscape, not places of belonging. I am careful to say Roman Catholic always when I refer to that present branch of the Christian Church because I honor the definition of Catholic, small c, as in both the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. The word Catholic, with a small c, as I am very careful to point out in all the confirmation classes I have ever taught, means all embracing, including all Christians, universal. At the same time, one of the most moving services of worship I have ever had the privilege of taking part in in all my life was in Rome, a service held to commemorate those who died trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea, refugees from North Africa, from Syria. 5,143 that one year of 2016. The vigil was an ecumenical service, so I was invited to sit with other clergy in one of the most beautiful churches in Rome, Santa Maria in Trastevere, organized by the community of Sant'Egidio, dedicated to helping the poorest of the poor we sat while a name was read out and a candle lit, brought forward by a young person for each person who had died, 
while the choir chanted continuously, Kyrie Eliaison. That service still takes place each year. I participated in many other services during those years in Rome to affirm the unity that many people feel is critical for the Christian Church in our time. Necessary, essential, long overdue, if the Church is to survive in any form at all. I was always made to feel welcome by those who participated in those ecumenical services for the week of prayer for Christian unity. Those who would not have made me feel welcome didn't take part. There is another service in particular that lingers in my memory from those Roman Catholic, from those Roman weeks of prayer for Christian unity. The invited preacher was Mark Langham. His sermon was a brilliant one. He had a gift of, for humor as well as for clear and incisive reflection on the truth entrusted to us. His sermon began with this illustration that I paraphrase. I had to take a long plane trip from Rome to the US and, faced with all those hours, decided to see what the offerings were on the movie channel. In an unthinking moment, I selected what seemed to be a Western, one of those endless variations on the classic Western ground out year after year. Well, this one featured the usual lineup of cowboys versus Indians. Riding horses, brandishing shotguns and spears, shouting and raising dust. But this particularly bad variation had an intriguing plot twist. Instead of cowboys wiping out the Indians, or Indians wiping out the cowboys, this time a new threat appeared on the horizon or, to be exact, from the sky. An alien space invader aircraft zoomed down and landed right in the middle of the skirmish. And, faced with this common enemy, the cowboys and the Indians united to defeat the foe they both faced. We were all laughing out loud in our pews. What could have illustrated better the task and the hope of the week of prayer for Christian unity. The Christian Church has been riven by factions of all kinds in these long centuries past. We have cared more for our distinguishing marks of difference than for the treasure of our inheritance of truth. The Kingdom of God has had a hard time breaking in by our means because we have veered off the path of truth, which is to affirm the saving goodness of God as revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. As in that historic affirmation of Pope Paul VI and Archbishop Michael Ramsey in 1966, we have the opportunity today, this week and every day of every week, to affirm what it is we believe, what we really believe, that we are not only in theory but in practice, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. There is no time to lose. The common enemies for the church of our time are the loss of knowledge of the Christian tradition, ignorance and indifference, the manifold distractions of the popular culture, the anxiety and fear of this pandemic and its consequences the growing inequality of wealth and of opportunity, the threat of environmental catastrophe already taking place. There is no time to lose. Let us affirm what it is that we hold in common with all the other branches of the Christian Church, Protestant, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, many sects and sub-sects. Let us affirm what it is we believe so that the Holy Spirit of God can work through us to restore to wholeness and health all of creation. We can hold a service of worship together as we did on Thursday evening, but let us also, each day, act in such a way that we reach our hands out to others 
both within and outside our own branch of the church. So may the unity of the church be visible and our own fellowship broadened to all the world. Amen. and around the world as we say together we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named we believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love we believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high we believe in one God Father, Son and Holy Spirit let us pray. As this week of prayer for Christian unity concludes, we say a prayer from the Armenian Church. From the east to the west, from the north and the south, all nations and peoples bless the creator of creatures with a new blessing. For he made the light of the sunrise today over the world. O congregations of the righteous, who glorify the Holy Trinity in the morning of light, praise Christ, the morning of peace, together with the Father and the Spirit, for he has made the light of his knowledge shine over us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, we turn our hearts to you. In ages past, you have delivered our nation from disaster. Do it again, we pray. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to our leaders. Give strength beyond human strength to the NHS and all our frontline workers. Give comfort beyond human comfort to the elderly and all who grieve. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, turn your face towards us. Have mercy upon us and heal our land, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your spirit. Rouse us to work in his name. Lord, in your mercy. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. For those who are sick, we pray, including Maria Cariotti, Elpida Manda, Maggie Neal, Peter Rogers, Caroline Bennett, Nathan Lee, Sally Basada, Roderick McLennan, Julia Payne, Rose Anderson. Lord, in your mercy, send us to those who mourn to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. We include in our prayers those recently departed. Valerie, Georgiana Joseph, Florence Richardson, Marjorie Sterling, Betty Caffrey, Pauline Wood, Will Schofield, Armin Schofield, Joyce Eggert, Douglas Tate, Rachel Reed, Lillian Phillips, Joyce Nibbs, Timothy James, Odell, and Hilary James. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
different introduction to peace pouring upon these threads from the sermon. My dear friends, love one another, Jesus said. This is how others will know that you are my, my disciples, if you love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Is here. His is Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy God. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the 
the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is given for you, the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady, St. George, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Believing the promises of God, we pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Ever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only say the word, and I shall be healed. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few notices which you can see in the back of your service sheets. Tonight, different service, evening prayer, and it's on the eve of the conversion of St. Paul, so it will be a different theme and uh, a different sermon this evening. Do join us 630 for evening prayer from St. John the Baptist. This week we have our uh, quiz evening. We've had our sort of Christmas appeal for Glassdoor, a uh, homeless charity working in West London. We've raised over £3,300, which is fantastic. Uh, if you haven't got around to donating yet, please do. And please join us, 7.30 uh, on Tuesday this evening for a fun quiz evening. We have someone from Glassdoor joining us at about 8 o'clock for the interval to speak for a few minutes about the, the work of Glassdoor. You can see all the other things happening, morning, evening, night prayer, and uh, coffee, poetry, morning, Bible study, lots of things happening throughout the whole week. Do join as much as you feel you are able to, uh, and join, uh, join us as a community as we sort of groan uh, in these services and come together in, in, a, in a wonderful way during this lockdown. Now, our final blessing. The Lord be with you. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.